Let me show you what I have. And this is take three. I'm trying to keep it short, but for some reason I'm struggling today. You know what I always am with making videos as short as possible because I'm trying to pack in as much information as possible. And uh, that's like a, an ongoing battle that I have when I'm doing videos. But this is my Bursa Thunder 380 Plus in Nickel. It is hot, and I'm actually carrying it with a Nate. Uh, Nate Squared Holster. That's N82Tactical.com. Uh, so a lot, some people say N82. I say Nate Squared because that's what it is. Nate Squared means that the two owners, they're both named, uh, named Nate. Uh, so Nate, that's where they get Nate Squared from. Only, you know, you can't kind of make it Nate Squared using you know URL or internet internet um, when you type in 8 2 the 2 is next to the 8 not up you know in the upper right hand corner of it so anyways the gun is hot so I'm not gonna do much with it um, it's in DA mode the safety is off though I don't use the safeties on my guns um, not if they're DA SA but anyways this is a like a rubber banding type uh, elastic. Um, it is flexible, but it is sort of contoured, so it stretches to a point, but it still main uh, retains the gun. So uh, I mean, it, it has to have some give, but it can't have too much give if the expectation is that it has to retain the gun, right? So uh, <clears throat> the clip here, this is their original uh, version of their holster. They have a, an original tuckable version, and the difference between the two is here. Um, on the tuckable, the clip, you can actually pull it out um, from the elastic here, which enables you to kind of tuck your shirt between the clip and the banding here. It, it, it enables you to hide your gun better. Um, so that is nice, um, but I just needed something to be able to carry this. Um, I needed something that would be easy to take off and put back on, um, a lot easier than my hybrid holsters. Uh, so this works and it's very comfortable. One side is suede, the other side is neoprene, um, they have something in the middle that's uh, cushiony, but I do believe the the design of this this holster. I mean, it's designed to keep moisture from your body from this side. You know, if you're sweating and and things like that from the gun, and uh, you have multiple barriers. You have the suede. Um, you have the the uh, neoprene on this side. And there's something in the middle. I don't know what it is. It's not hard. It's soft, but it's thick. So uh, between, you know, you have three barriers there to keep uh, keep moisture away from the gun. Uh, I carried this yesterday afternoon. I, I don't. I can't carry at work. Um, I work on federal property, and uh, what I normally do is I, as soon as I'm dressed, I put this on. And I'm walking around in the house. I might be here for a half an hour getting breakfast and getting ready to go. Once uh, once I'm ready to go, I hop outside. The first thing I do is I get to the car. And I take this out of the holster. I put the holster in one area of the car. Um, I put this, the gun, in a lockbox under the, my seat. Um, that way I don't forget that I have it on and I end up getting in trouble with the law with federal law. So um, I'm a firm proponent of uh, carrying, but uh, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to make a statement by getting arrested at my job. You know, that, that, that's not me. And I don't only work on federal property. I work where lots of federal law enforcement officers work. Um, so that's the, the last thing I need to do is forget that I'm carrying and walk in strapped in that place. So uh, I lock my gun up. 
I don't see it. You know, I drive on on the on the premises because I I refuse to be totally unprotected just to get back and forth to work. So I'm doing my part by saying, okay, well, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not a, a nuisance, and I'm gonna make sure that um, you guys don't have to worry about me. Um, but I will be carrying because my life isn't just spent at work. My life is also spent commuting back and forth to work, uh, going home, going, you know, to work and things like that. So uh, there's a chance I might need that gun while I'm not at work, but I'm going to work, you know, or I'm not at work, but I'm going home from work. So uh, I refuse to be totally unprotected. So my idea is to lock up the box. Um, and when I get off property, sometimes I pull over and I put it on. Uh, sometimes I wait till I get home, put it on. But the gun is always there. Um, I, you know, if it's locked, that just means I have to uh, get it as quickly as possible if I need it. Uh, you know what I mean? Compromises, guys. Compromises. That that's life. So, but anyways, the gun carries good. Um, it's thicker than a normal Bursa. Um, it's double stacked. Um, I like that. That's that's one of the main reasons I got it. Um, I also think it looks it looks good. Uh, I think it looks sexy, uh, just like that. It's got a very nice fat profile. It's a fat bottomed girl. <laughs> Some people like fat bottomed girls. So um, plus, I like my DASA guns. Um, yes. The, again, there's compromises in everything we do, right? Um, so when you when you have a DASA gun, you have to train for two triggers. Uh, you have to, in my opinion, you have to ensure that if you're going to pull the trigger, you have to kind of you have to be responsible for where that lead is going to go. Uh, so that means that you can't just rely on single action, especially if when you're carrying, you're in DA mode. You can't really carry this gun in SA mode. You can, but uh, it's it's not designed to do that, and it's damn unsafe. Um, if you're gonna do that, you definitely need something that's gonna tr cover a trigger. I don't think this is gonna cut it. it. It's fine, but I I would say get something that a little bit more rugged. Um, it's designed to be carried uh, in DA mode. Whether you carry it with the safety on or off, I do believe it, it might be designed to carry with the safety on because when you drop the uh, when you drop the decocker and then you flip it back up, um, the hammer goes all the way down. So there is a standoff area. It's it's like a half cocked. Um, there's a standoff point where you know I think the what do you call it? The uh, the safeties keep the hammer from touching the uh, the firing pin. But when you drop the the decocker and then flip it back up, you disengage that safety and it slant, and it goes all the way forward. So if you drop the gun, I have a feeling that you might have a chance of a of a discharge if it's you know if it's fully forward. Uh, the solution to that is once you've decocked it and flipped the safety back up pull the hammer back just a tad and you'll hear it go click and that's what I did and look it's it's, it's standoff again um, the things I like about the gun it's small it's a looker um, it's easy to shoot um, accurately um, that's not saying that you don't need to practice with the gun there are some nuances with the gun that are a little bit challenging. For me, it's a trigger placement because my hands are big. And the way the trigger is, it's it's pretty far forward. And look at that damn hook on that trigger. So when I have to choke up on the trigger, especially when in, when in DA mode. Uh, when I'm in SA mode, the, the trigger is back far enough to where it's it doesn't matter. Um, if I don't choke up on the gun, 
um, it hurts my finger a lot. Um, ideally, what you want to do is you want to use the middle part of your the pad of your finger. When I choke up, I usually have to put it probably closer to the joint than I normally use. That's the only way I can really shoot the gun without pain. Um, now, if I put it toward the middle, the first shot won't hurt. But when I practice DA mode, I don't just practice that one shot and then shoot single action. What I'll do is I'll practice DA and then you know once that shot is fired it's in SA mode what I'll do is I'll use the decocker to put it back in DA mode and continue to you know from there I'll try to rapidly fire again because what you want to do is you want to be as accurate as possible with that DA trigger uh, and uh, while also being quick so um, I practice trying to be as fast and as accurate as possible and, and I did that earlier this week with the with the uh, the PX4 Storm and I found that my groupings were actually pretty damn close when I was doing that which means that one it's it's probably easier I don't have a finger play, placement problem with this gun uh, I mean with the uh, with the Storm I have it with this gun because it's smaller um, and because of the ergonomics are kinda funny um, but the uh, you know the, the PX4 is, is a lot bigger and I, I have the compact, but it's still a lot bigger than this. Um, as well, the safety is very difficult to reach. If you look here, my finger is far enough, my thumb is far enough forward where I can't use this to kind of, it's too far forward. I'd have to kind of back off and rearrange my hand on the gun in order to use this hand to, uh, to take the safety off. So that's another reason not to carry with the safety on in this gun. Uh, but you can also train yourself to use the other hand. So when you're when you're drawing the gun, you could be reaching for it, and as you're bringing it up, using this hand to flip it up. Uh, after a while, you probably be able to do it instinctively. Uh, but even so, this one's stiff as hell, even after close to 300 rounds, um, and it's lubed to hell in the inside. And I, I constantly flip it on and off, trying to get it to wear in. And uh, no, it's just there's some things I don't like about the gun. Uh, now the sights are really good, um, both pros and cons. Uh, the cons are because that the rear dots are really small. Uh, the the pro is the big the the front dot is is big, so it's got this like big dot set up going on here um, and in the end when you're when you're uh, defensively you know shooting you're not going to spend time trying to line these sights up uh, you'd best be focusing on that front sight um, because in the end you you, you just place the, the front dot where you want to shoot and more than likely you're going to hit the, I mean in that respect you're lined up it's just a matter of how high or low you're probably going to hit at that point. So um, that that's the main reason why you know uh, you see these defensive videos stating that you know try and focus on the front on the front sight because uh, I mean I just explained why um, you want to be quick and you don't have to be you don't have to play place the the lead in the red. In a defensive shooting, you have to be accurate so that you can kind of be responsible for that lead, making sure that you don't hit a bystander and stuff like that. But you don't have to be so accurate that you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, what do you call it, circumcising a gnat, right? So um, there it is. Nice sweet gun, nickel finish. This is something I wasn't really keen on. I was looking for a black version. I couldn't find any version when I was looking, so I jumped on the first one that became available, which happened to be nickel. And uh, in real life, when you're looking at this, it's more of like a satin colored 
and depending on the lighting it almost has like this pinkish hue to it, it it's nice it is nice um, it is a shooter's gun it's not a collectible um, if you look at it and you have OCD you will hate it because it does have blemishes it has machine marks I can see some right there um, if you if you take apart the slide you see some all in there um, if you lift up the hammer here you can see them all in there in that area right around where the firing pin is um, I've got scratches on mine uh, from the back and that, that came from the factory I took it anyways um, and it looks like this is a brand new gun um, and the first thing I thought was they sold me something that uh, that someone had been holstering because on both sides of the slide right here in the, in the muzzle there's a uh, looks like what there's slide wear um, and back here as well but <clears throat> the uh, the place where I bought the guns they swear up and down that this is a new gun and what I think what was happening is during shipping it's in the box and that you know that the, the packing material that it's packed in it's you know being jostled around and it's rubbing and it's kind of causing friction with the with the finish of the gun and I, I think that's what I'm seeing here but the you know there are scratches as well like there's a, a nick here uh, there's a scratch here and it was like that out of the box as well um, so don't get this gun expecting to have some immaculate masterpiece um, it's a masterpiece if you shoot it um, but don't it's not a Picasso it's not a Picasso of guns um, you know a lot of people they call this a uh, Walther uh, PBK uh, clone it is not it is not a clone this is actually a bigger gun they look similar like beaver, the beaver tail area the uh, the muzzle and slide um, they both blowback guns they both break down similarly but you could say that for a Makarov or any of the other blowback type guns um, there are lots of guns out there that they look similar but they're not they're not I mean you don't you're not able to kind of swap parts back and forth between them and that's what I define a clone as a clone is something that's pretty much identical when you clone your, you know, you hear people say, I wish I could clone myself. They're not saying, I wish I had someone that was similar to myself. They said clone, a copy. So when people say, oh, this is a, this is a Walther clone. This is a Walther copy. That's what they're saying. This is not a copy. It's not. If you were to take a gun and kind of, take a pencil and trace all around it and you take this gun and then you do it with a waffle and then you kind of line up the papers and kind of see how much they, they match you'll find a similar probably a similar trace but you're gonna find the very definitive differences as well then that, that goes with any clone clone you know any type of similar gun for instance the Walther P99 and the Canic TP9 SA a lot of people swear up and down that they're, they're clones. They're not clones. Uh, but uh, word is that Walther sold uh, uh, sold the rights for uh, Canik to actually use their specs. And so what they did was they pretty much built uh, a, a, a gun that was very similar to the Walther P99, but you, like again you can't there's no parts in those two guns that you can swap out and have a functional gun there's not not even the magazines the magazines fit but they don't stay in they don't stay in place they'll slide in there but then when you let go it falls out that's not a clone and plus I wouldn't I wouldn't judge a gun and it's 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 what do you call it uh I wouldn't judge a gun how do I say that as far as clones go I wouldn't judge two guns based on the fact that they they have swappable magazines 
because there are lots of guns that'll take other magazines. You know, uh, uh, some people say that. Uh, I'm trying to think here. There was one gun that people were saying that could take Bursa. I mean, not Bursa, Beretta M9 magazine. I'm trying to remember which gun it was. Um, and and it turned out that that was not the case, but uh, two very different guns. They just happened to kind of share the same inner, you know, magwell uh, profile, and they might happen to, if not, have the same cutouts to allow for the magazine release to be, you know, to be used. Um, some people actually, you know, cut out the holes themselves. So you know that's just because there's 20 million guns out there uh, there's gonna be some similarities right but anyways we're getting close we're at the, tw the 20 minute 21 minute mark now uh, the last video was 35 minutes and so this would be the time for us to end this because this is a perfect length um, ideally I would like to I would have liked to have a, a 15 minute video, but I'll take 20, I'll take 21. Um, so, folks, the Bursa Thunder 380 Plus. If you have one and you haven't done a video on it, please do because I like to hear everyone's input on guns. I don't necessarily care to hear about the big popular uh, online entities reviewing those guns because a lot of times they don't cover the same things that I just discussed they kinda just shoot and kinda give a quick assessment um, they don't never go they don't ever come back maybe a year later and say well here's how you know the gun has treated me so far or here are the problems that I've noticed with this gun uh, they don't give a user's perspective of the gun. What they do is they kind of give an initial impression and then they move on. I like to see realism in a sense, not not so much. I don't need you to see you guys shooting and rolling in the dirt and stuff like that. Um, what I do want to hear is long-term uh, usage pros and cons um, any type of issues with you know the gun uh, not staying clean in a certain area you know under the extractor for example um, I want to know when you know if a particular gun uh, just pretty much across the board uh, someone you know this is just an example um, sights falling off uh, screws coming out uh, a particular part failing you know the hammer or something um, finish you know that type of stuff um, how does it shoot do a lot of people complain of uh, excessive recoil um, you know I explained earlier how um, I put some Fiocchi I put 50 rounds of Fiocchi through the burst of thunder and it was choking on it and then after I did research I found out that uh, a majority of folks have been complaining about Fiocchi and someone kind of measured uh, the dimension of the min the dimensions of the round and then compared it with another uh, brand and found that Fiocchi is generally kind of uh, considered uh, out of spec um, as well uh, I shot Herder's 95 grain uh, what is it select grade ammo um, it shoots like it's hot because it's stinging the hell out of the webbing of my hand. Um, after two uh, close to 300 rounds, I had never felt that with any of the ammo I shot out of the gun until I shot hers. And then I found out later on, you know, after doing research, that that ammo is not really special. It's just normal ammo. It's not deemed as hot. Um, but for some reason, I don't know. Maybe the powder burn is cleaner or something. Maybe the the type of powder that they're using is maybe kind of making it uh, burn better or or something uh, but 
I find it hard to believe at you know, 270 rounds and then I fire a box of 50 at, you know, of herders, all of a sudden the, this shit's like tearing the hell out of my, uh, the webbing of my hand. Um, so it's, you know, it's not in my mind here, but I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on. That's the type of stuff I like, I like to see in here. That's, that's real shit right there. That's not something that you're going to see from Such and all these other guys, you know, they're moving so quickly trying to review all these exotic guns and they're trying to be trying to make this perfect video and you know they're shooting in a 4k and all this shit um, and I have mad respect for Such. I, I watch all of his videos all the time I make comments on him the Mr. Guns and Gears channels um, all of those guys I, I don't have a problem with but I do think that sometimes they miss the point of these videos they're out there to, they're out there to make money uh, you know, the more clicks they get, the, the, the better revenue they generate, but they're, I think they're doing themselves and the community a disservice when they're kind of moving so fast that they don't cover some of the things that people need to hear. So, so they, you know, and that's what got me kind of, you know, here we are, 26 minute mark, shit. Um, that's what really kicked off my series on the on the Grand Power P11. I got fed up with the fact that you know I was having issues with uh, uh, it being picky with ammo, but yet when you go to all of these these uh, when you do a, a YouTube search, you get 20 million hits on the Grand Power. No one's talking about the problems. They're just talking. Oh, it shoots awesome. You mean to tell me not? no one's having ammo choke up from time to time in their guns bullshit it's bullshit or it's either that or they're moving so quickly with guns they're not accumulating enough time to kind of see those issues I don't know but uh, we're at the 27 minute mark bye